Hi, this is Mover and Shaker, and welcome to another pool video. So our first step is to make sure that the cover is clear. I've got my blower here, the residual or remaining dirt and debris off the top of the cover before we take it off because I want to try to minimize any kind of dirt falling into the pool. Um, so here we go. And the removal of the pool cover has begun. I got time. It's clear to see. From up here, the world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful. You and me, we meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. Okay, so we just removed the cover and we're getting ready to start our first step, which is pressure washing the top of the cover. And then we're going to use the yard blower to blow all the water off and then we're going to turn the cover over rinse the back side and blow the cover off dry it fold it and put it up take a step back to see the truth around you look at how pretty the water turned out after all winter long so the next steps we're going to be is to remove this winter pillow and the strings and also the winter floater. And then we're going to detach the strings and put them away in a freezer bag. And then we're going to take the air out of the pillow and rinse the pillow off and then let it dry and then we're going to put it away until the fall pressure washing the sides of the pool just to get some of the winter dirt off of the pool. Okay, so now that we've already pressure washed the exterior of the pool, I'm going to go around with my dry erase marker, which I told you about in the previous video that it comes in handy. I'm going to go around the top to these rails here, which is where a lot of people do their hanging out when they're doing maintenance or just looking at the pool and admiring it. We're going to get some of this deep dirt that has stuck over here since the winter time and um, I'm going to show you just real quick how good the dry erase marker works. Oh, not a dry erase marker. How good the magic eraser works on this pole. So if you just go down the sides of these, it's almost like an eraser. It takes off. See all that dirt? Mm. It all came off of this. And yeah, you could probably get some regular household cleaner and paper towels, but this does a much better job. If you have rocks around your pool or, or pavers and stones, this would be a good time while you're pressure washing the pool if you are doing that or with a hose and just wash off your bricks of any mud, debris, and dirt and that way everything will look new again. That's one of the satisfying things about a pressure washer. So now we're placing the sand pump and the salt water system. They've been indoors in a shed all winter long, staying protected from the elements so they could last for at least five years, we're hoping. And then now we're gonna hook up the hoses and get everything going so that we can start cleaning this pool and adding some water. So far we have the salt water system, the pump, and the waterfall hooked up. Uh, so we're going to get everything hooked up and then we're going to start cleaning the pool and adding water. Okay, so now we're using the Intex stick vacuum. This is how our pool looked, by the way, when we opened it up today. There was a couple leaves in there and there were what looks like to be some worms that got in there. 
but this is what our pool looked like when we opened it up after it being shut down since September was it? Better than last year. September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. That is a long time for this water to look this good. Yes, it is. So that's what we're doing right now. Getting up these few leaves, adding some water, and then we're going to turn our pump on. So just so you'll know, we have not even begun to test our water yet. All we're doing is filling the pool up after he ran the vacuum for approximately 45 minutes. So this is the original pool water that was in the pool all winter long with new water being added as we speak. After this water is done being added, we will let the pump run a few more hours and then we're going to test the water just to see where we're at before we proceed with balancing the pool if needed. So today is Sunday, the day after we opened up the pool. We have not added one single thing to our pool water yet. The only thing we've been doing is running the pump and we're about to test our water for the first time. As you can see, it already looks clear and uh, so I'll be purchasing that winterizing kit again next fall and I'll put a link in the description for the same kit that we used in our saltwater pool. We're right now getting ready to just use a regular pool test strip just to test our water. So we just did a test strip in the pool and we're reading the levels right now. That's a little low, total hardness. The total chlorine. It's okay. Your free chlorines are a little low. That's what the salt water system will take care of. Yeah. This is okay for pH. Very surprised. That's good. Here we are. Hi. Total no. alkalinity. Uh, yeah, oh, actually, no. It, yeah, You're it's like in right, the, right in there. I think in that's that the range. okay. It's in between there. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the last one, which is the okay cyanuric acid. And it's in the okay range at 100, mm -hmm. so that's good. So total hardness is the only one that fell out of range? Uh, let's see. Total hardness is a little low. So we'll yep. have to figure out what we need to do with that. Total chlorines are okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. Now, all right, now we're going to do salt water. Okay, so we came up with 6.8 with the salt water. And on this chart here, it says 6.8 equals 3,370 ppm. 25 to 3,500 is our range. We're actually in range, and the only thing I can think of even though I had to add water this year was the fact that we added a bag last year because we were on the low lower end so we added a whole bag and then about a eh, two weeks or three weeks later we ended up closing the pool down had to drain some water out even with us adding water we've got our levels exactly where we want them so now what we're going to do is hit the boost button for 24 hours and bring that total chlorine and free chlorine up instead of 32 hours instead of 32 hours yeah we're just going to do them yeah because we're already at our optimal salt levels we are we just need to bring the uh, uh the chlorine the free chlorine actually up and we're going to look into the total hardness being just a tad low yeah and, it, and and with us bringing the chlorine up it may it may come up to to speed so after we boost for 24 hours and see how it runs uh, or see how it goes. Let's see where our to total chlorine and total hardness and all that other. So we'll see if everything is in check. And if not, we'll go from there. Well, we're pretty close, though. We're closer than I really expected for being locked down all summer. But if everything on the regular test strips hadn't read properly, we would have add, had to add some chemicals just to get the water balance before turning right. on the salt water system. Absolutely. So we just yep. got really lucky. Don't know if we're, it's the salt water system or what it is or, or, or the, uh, the closing kit that we use with the salt water. All the above parameters mm -hmm. uh, are working really well in check. So we're going to plug it in and go. So what we're going to do now is turn this on to unlock it. 12 hours and then we're going to go to FP. 
and we're going to lock that in place. FP is free pump. That's going to allow the, the system to run indefinitely or until I close it, turn it off. So we can turn on the coordinator and run boost. Because if the coordinator does not have the pump running, it has a low flow alert, it will shut down and would be defeating the purpose. So what we do now, turn this on.